to do it. I mean, the Marines are the only people that you can bring in, and there's not, and the Marines are not a sustainable force. They go in for six weeks or eight weeks, and then they have to be pulled out. But uh, our analysis was uh, uh, 1,500 air sorties a day, of which we would have to move virtually all of the combat airplanes that we have in, into the region. Uh, it would cost a fortune. And we would have to put 500 drones uh, over the area to where somebody from ISIL wouldn't even go near a, a car, much less. If they started it up, it would give it a heat signal. And I said, yeah, then ISIL is, is bye-bye. And it would be very hard to recruit. Very hard to recruit when people never come home who join these terrorist organizations. Abdel Wahid Majid, nickname Abu Sulaiman al baritani nationality British. He worked as a driver for the Lebanese sheikh from Al-Qaeda, Omar Bakri Fistuk, who resided in London and headed an extremist Salafi cell in Britain. He had announced his support for chopping off heads, London assaults and the 11th of September event, as well as for the Afghani jihadists. Britain has not put him away till the year 2005 without charging him. Abu Sulaiman has been the most discernible member in the cell of Omar Bakri, accompanied by Nigeria killer Michael Adibulajo, who killed a British soldier with a chopper. He drove a truck loaded with eight tons of explosives and broke through the walls of Aleppo Central Prison on the 8th of February 2014. Khadija Dair, nickname Muhajira Tusham, nationality British. She is fighting within the ranks of ISIS organization, along with her Swedish husband Abu Bakr. She is active in recruiting Western and British girls for joining the fight in Syria through Twitter, like, All the people back in land of disbelievers, what are you waiting for? Hurry up and join the caravan to where the laws of Allah is implemented. She used to be a casual girl who liked to play and hang out. She turned into a jihadist after her marriage to the Swedish Abu Bakr. She tweeted asking everyone to publish the images of slaying American journalist James Foley. She ironically tweeted, Britain and the US are trembling now, adding, I wish I could be the first armed woman who slays a British or American. That's just not something a bunch of criminals that they get out of the hobbles of different Arab cities. They, they don't know how to do things like that. And then we also saw that they, they had very, very good, good intelligence. And by that I mean uh, they had either satellite or drone intelligence from the air. Uh, so they always knew where the uh, Iraqi army was and where they were not. And we know that they don't have satellites and they don't have drones. So someone was giving uh, that to them. And we suspect uh, of the Israelis are at the top of the list. And then we think uh, possibly part of the shadow government people, some of these contractors from the Bush holdover area and whatever are giving them. Uh, we see no way, uh, because the, the, the types of tactics that they're using are the, the types of things that our best people could do. And they can't do it without all of those extra things. So uh, we, we could see there's a major country uh, hand in it, or several major countries in the top. And, and the scary thing about it, there may be things that the U.S. is doing that there are people in the U.S. government, because we, we have people in the, in the command that know there's things going on militarily that they, they can find no trace of in the chain of command. Turki al-Ash'ari, nickname Abu al-Zubair, nationality Saudi. He belonged to an Nusra Front organization. He was the Sharia judge of the front in Hama. He fought in Aleppo, the central prison, and Der Atiyah. He was one of the most important Saudi Al-Qaeda members in Al Nusra Front. He was a poet and active on Twitter and social networking sites. He encouraged unity amongst jihadists and suicidal operations. Al Nusra assigned him to achieve conciliation with ISIS during the supper event of Al-Adha feast 
on the 18th of October 2013, which comprised the number of ISIS and an Nusra leaders. He was killed in a suicidal explosion at a checkpoint for the Syrian army in the village of Ar-Rahjan in Hama countryside on the 27th of January 2014. Abdul Rahman Ayashi, nickname Abu Hajar, nationality French. He graduated from Belgium, specialized in software engineering and internet sites. He is a specialist in networks and communications and owns the Netcom Group, which was established in 2008. He belongs to the organization of Sukur al-Sham Brigades. He was killed in Idlib in clashes with the Syrian army on the 19th of June 2013. Moi, je ne pense pas non euh, qu'il y ait une volonté euh, des Européens euh, de, 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 de pousser ou d'aider euh, les, euh, les, les, les apprentis djihadistes euh, d'aller en Syrie. Bon, les, euh, les, les Européens sont des imbéciles, mais pas forcément des idiots complets. Ils savent fort bien euh, leur service d'enseignement, savent fort bien les dangers. Euh, de cette euh, migration euh, euh, des terroristes, des futurs terroristes en, en, en Syrie. Euh, par contre, il est plus que probable euh, que la Turquie a joué un rôle trouble. Il y a eu euh, récemment, il y, a, il y a quelques mois, euh, une affaire euh, euh, où deux frères qui avaient rejoint les terroristes en Syrie étaient revenu en Turquie et là, probablement à la demande des services français, ils avaient été arrêtés et invités à prendre l'avion pour la France. Alors ils ont pris l'avion et ils ont atterri à Marseille alors qu'on les attendait à, à, à Paris. C'est invraisemblable, c'est invraisemblable. C'est-à-dire que la Turquie n'a pas donné les informations. Raphaël Condoron, nickname Abu Marwal Faransi, nationality French. He joined the brigade of Sukur Sham. His dead body was found in a clash with the Syrian army on the 14th of April 2013. Ramil Yahya, nickname Abu Malik, nationality Saudi. He joined the battles in Afghanistan and was a leading member in an Nusra Front. He was imprisoned in Iraq for seven years. He was killed in Aleppo during clashes with the Syrian army on the 23rd of June 2013. On the territory of Syria, uh, uh, there are many members of the world, including from Russia. And the Russian government is very this fact. Более того, предпринимаются шаги, чтобы заставить этих людей э, уйти с пути э, к террористической деятельности, на которой они встали. Проблема в том, что это боевики, которых выучили э, на американские деньги бороться против России на Кавказе. Они Там занимались организацией взрывов, э, расстрелов. Э, и когда власть в России навела порядок и установила относительную безопасность Северного Кавказа, они даже для того, чтобы продолжить свою деятельность и для зарабатывания э, кровавых денег, и просто для выживания покинули Россию и воюют сейчас здесь. Убежден, что э, это изгои для нашей страны. Это люди, которые не просто не представляют народы России, но они утратили национальное чувство вообще. Они стали вот теми безродными людьми, которые ради американских долларов, желательно в толстой пачке, будут убивать даже своих родных. И с такими людьми нужно бороться только их уничтожением. Сакар Мельхил Фреди Аль-Харби, никнейм Абу Аззам, национальность Сауди.
He was a member of Al Nusra Front. He detonated himself with an explosive belt in Bab Musalla in Damascus on the 23rd of June 2013. Mustafa Al Majzoub, nationality, Australian. He is originally Syrian from Latakia. His brother is Sheikh Fida Al Majzoub, a member of the opposition led Syrian National Council. He has a bachelor degree in Islamic studies and worked as a lecturer and preacher in Friday prayers in the Islamic centers in Australia. He used this Facebook page to incite participation with jihadists in Syria. He was killed in a raid in the Kurds Mount province on the 19th of August 2013. Along with him, terrorists Hamdi Saad and Hikmat Zaytoun were killed. There are so many youngsters, Muslim youngsters from, let's say, Western Europe, go to Syria to fight. First of all, uh, in the 70s and uh, 80s, late 70s, uh, beginning of the 80s, a lot of uh, Muslims in Belgium, for instance, came from Morocco and from Turkey. They came to our country because they were looking for a better life. And there was, at that time, the economy was booming. They found easy jobs and things like that. So, and then after that, uh, their families came, and still now, thousands and thousands of new Muslims come to Belgium and to, to Western Europe, to, to France, uh, Holland, wherever. They come there to see, in seek for a better life or to, to join their families or the relatives who are already there. So, but there is no more booming economy at the moment. We have, a, we have, a, a, we have no more labor for, for them. So they, they feel themselves a little bit rejected on the, on the labor market. They don't feel very welcome because our people are saying, okay, but what do we need all these immigrants because we don't have work for our own? And the, the, then they start, uh, the, the social system starts collapsing. So there's a, an atmosphere of, of reject from both sides. Then you have mosques in, in our country uh, that are funded and grounded and financially uh, put away by, by Wahhabi regimes by Saudi Arabia. So when these imams, they preach a related uh, form of Islam that is completely retarded and that is very, very extremist. And these youngsters who are already rejected, who are already outside the, the society, they find, okay, their imams say, you should be a Muslim, go to Syria, help your Muslim brothers to fight this evil regime of Bashar al-Assad, kill them all, and you know, what, you know what they say. So these youngsters, they, it's a form of adventure and it's a form of, of of uh, yeah, well, uh, the, the incapability of adjusting to, to our society that drives them here. And our, our government silently hopes they stay here because they get rid of, the, of these guys. Khalid Sharouf, nickname, Azarqawi Australi, nationality Australian. He was a drug addict, followed the Takfiri thought, a former convict and banned from traveling. Yet, he simply left Australia and joined the ISIS organization. He aroused the world's revulsion by his photos on Facebook, surrounded by chopped off heads and holding two heads. The world was stunned by the image of his little child holding a chopped off head of a Syrian citizen. He bragged saying, this is my son. Muhammad Gharam Muhammad al-Shahri Nickname, Abu Malik al-Azdi. Nationality, Saudi. He belongs to ISIS organization. One of the most important terrorism leaders in Syria who is responsible for chopping off heads of tens of Syrian citizens. He was known as Ben Laden of Syria as he much looked like him. He was one of his comrades and students. He was the emir of one of the groups and he was responsible for tens of operations of booby trapping and explosions in Iraq. He was killed in northern Latakia during clashes with the Syrian army on 2013. Il est bien évident que la majorité des combattants de Daesh, si l'on peut dire, viennent d'abord du, du bassin méditerranéen, essentiellement aussi d'Irak et d'Afghanistan, et en proportion relativement importante de pays européens comme la France, comme l'Allemagne, l'Angleterre, la Belgique, l'Espagne, l'Italie, et aussi d'Europe centrale, puisque vous avez des Bosniaques, vous avez des Tchétchènes. Que se passe-t-il aujourd'hui au Proche-Orient Au Proche-Orient, on nous apprend au printemps 14, 2014 qu'il y a un monstre qui est apparu, qui s'appelle Dash, comme si c'était un champignon qui avait émergé après la pluie, 
la monstruosité, l'horreur. Tous les gouvernements montrent du doigt cet abominable cancer qui va envahir la terre entière. Or, qu'est-ce que c'est Daesh Daesh est une création d'Al-Qaïda. C'est un regroupement d'Al-Qaïda avec cinq organisations irakiennes qui a été créée en Irak en avril 2006 par le Conseil. Ils ont créé le Conseil national des Moudjahidines. Donc, il ne faut pas faire croire aux téléspectateurs européens que c'est une création spontanée. Pas du tout. C'est une création qui était pensée, qui était planifiée et qui était imposée à la zone proche orientale et moyen orientale. La question est de savoir pourquoi. Qui manipule la marionnette Sven Lau, nickname Abu Adam Al Almani, nationality German. He is a member of Islamic radical movements organization which are active in Germany. He fought in Afghanistan with Al Qaeda, and he was a friend of Anwar Al Awlaki, chief of Al Qaeda in Yemen, who was killed in an American raid. The Egyptian authorities banned him from entering Cairo on the 7th of June 2013. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Liebe Geschwister, wir befinden uns gerade hier in Syrien. Vor einem, was ihr was gerade am Anfang gesehen konntet. He joined the organization of Salafi terrorism in Syria and showed up on YouTube sites on the 1st of October 2013, inciting Muslims to head for Syria to fight and offer support. The German federal police arrested him on charge of designing dangerous crimes. He founded the extremist organization Call for Heaven in Germany. Burak Karan, nickname Abu Abdullah Turki, nationality German. He was former international football player in the German youth team. He was known to the German intelligence as an extremist. He traveled to Afghanistan and Pakistan, where he was trained and joined the fight in 2010. In early 2013, he joined the ISIS terrorist organization. The German newspaper Bild disclosed his death in the Syrian town of Azaz on the 11th of November 2013 while he was with ISIS. The German foreign ministry confirmed the news of killing former member of the German youth sports team Burak Karan. Quand on pose la question à qui profite le crime, eh bien on réfléchit. Et avant de vous livrer certaines réflexions, je reviens sur les brigades internationales. Parce que les gens qui étaient com partis combattre Bachar al-Assad, qui avait été désigné en 2011 comme étant le petit-fils ou le fils d'Hitler, en étant Satan, Belzébuth, l'homme à abattre. Les gouvernements du monde entier ont appelé à éliminer Bachar al-Assad. Donc, vous avez des gens, des jeunes notamment, qui sont partis combattre Bachar al-Assad au Proche-Orient, des musulmans en grande partie, qui sont comparables aux brigadistes de 1936. Donc il n'y a pas à leur jeter la pierre en disant ce sont des terroristes.